Hello everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today I shall be doing H.A. Roberts chapter number 35, that is modern medication and the homeopathic principles. So it has totally four parts. So today I'll be doing the first part. This part is done or rather this chapter is done because of some request by a person who wants, to, who wants it to be done. So all principles, including those of homeopathy, have been discovered and evolved through the process of time, experimentation, and increased awareness. So therefore, Dr. Robert says that all the principles of homeopathy, they have been discovered as time goes by, experimentation has been done, and naturally, there'll be an increased awareness of the same. The principles which benefit from the application stand permanent and unchangeable in spite of all changes in the therapeutic field. So whatever principles which were time tested as the time, as the time goes by through experimentation, they stand permanent and they are unchanged or they are unchangeable in spite of all changes in the therapeutic field. So in the therapeutic field, there could be different approaches, how to find out the right remedy or what remedy to give. So as time advances, the therapeutic field application also will have some changes. So Dr. Robert says that the principles of homeopathy, they are permanent, they are unchangeable in spite of the changes in the, in the therapeutic field. The principles do not change with the passage of time. In fact, it offers great opportunity for examination of the results of applied principles and the action of the natural laws and its evolution. Again, Roberts reminds us that the principles that do not change with the passage of time, but he says, in fact, it offers a greater opportunity for the examination of the results of the applied principles. So these principles are unchangeable and it gives us a more better opportunity to examine the results of the applied principles and also the action of the natural laws and its evolution. The word modern must always be used in a comparative sense. So Robert says that when you use the word modern, always use it in the comparative sense. So the word modern meaning at present. So whatever is there at present, you have to have it in a comparison form. It is appreciated more keenly when considered in the light of medical practice. So the word modern would be appreciated if it would be considered in the light of medical practice. Meaning what? The elements of practice of today that have survived the crucible of time have rightly become recognized at the principles of the, at the, principles of the art. So whatever practice we are doing, they have, or whatever practice we are doing, they have survived through the time process and they have rightly become recognized at the principles of the art. So whatever, uh, rather whatever principles are there, we have verified them through time and again, and it has been recognized as the, as the foundation stone of these principles which we have to follow. And these principles, basically the application of these principles is nothing but an art. This is what he wants to say. Medicine always deals with the ills of mankind and has passed through a continuous bombardment of modern discoveries. So Robert says that medicine, it deals with the different diseases or the ills of mankind. And as time passes by, new and modern discoveries have taken place. So many discoveries take place one after the other so therefore he has used the word bombardment. The new possibilities of investigation of functions of the body have increased our knowledge of life processes and the circumstances of living. So he further says that whenever there are new possibilities of investigation and finding out the different functions of the body, this helps us to increase the knowledge of the process of life and what relationship it has to the circumstances of living. This increase in knowledge has been of inestimable value in dealing with the human suffering. So therefore he says that what whenever our knowledge has increased, it is, an, it, is a, it is a very important for us because it helps us to deal with the human suffering. 
in spite of increased knowledge of the mechanism of the body, no guiding principles have been discovered by the dominant school of medicine, which guides us to the indications in the field of therapeutics. So it says that in spite of the increased knowledge of the different functions of the body or the mechanisms going on in our body, no guiding principles have been discovered by the dominant school. So no doubt they have discovered the different processes going on in our body, the different functions, the different mechanisms of different system, different organs, different tissues in our body. But sadly, they have no guiding principles have been discovered by the dominant school, which guides us to the indication of the field of therapeutics. That means what? There's no specific principle which is there, which will help to guide the practitioner to prescribe that. This means that there is no test for that of experience for any therapeutic agent. It means what? That there is no test has been done, but only is, it is only the matter of experience for any therapeutic agent. That means what? Any therapeutic agent you are using to treat the disease, there are no tests have been done, no experiments have been done, but it's only based on pure experience. That experience of what? Of the individual practitioner. Modern medicine, since the period of its discovery, still finds itself on the basis of experience rather than of true science. So, Robert says that modern medicine, since the period of its discovery, it still finds itself on experience, rather it still thrives on experience rather than true science. Let us now consider the discovery of synthetic group of drugs. So now here he says now, let us take an example of the discovery of the synthetic group of drugs. There has been a continuous evolution of these substances over a period of time. So over a period of time, many, many drugs have been have, have come out, the synthetic preparations have come out, and they are go on improving on these synthetic preparations. So then the evolution of this synthetic pre preparation is a continuous process. He gives the example aspirin, numinol, phenols, sulfur anilamides, vitamins, and numerous others. Each discovery has been hailed as a modern development of science for the conquering or elevation of the ills of mankind. So each of the discoveries of these substances which are mentioned above, modern medicine has been hailed or, it has be, or they have given great importance or they have cried aloud that with this help of these medicines, we have conquered, we have destroyed or we have uh, made the sufferings of mankind better or we have helped to reduce the suffering of the mankind with these remedies. Sober investigations of these claims of the therapeutic measures are aimed at a single symptom or at most a small group of symptoms and not the patient himself. So these remedies were taken based on a symptom, on a single symptom, or at the most more than one symptom that is in a small group of symptoms, say two or three but it did not treat the patient himself. So they did not take into consideration the patient as whole, but they only took into account one, two, or three, or a, or, a, or a small handful of symptoms on which they were prescribing. In most cases, the discovery of such therapeutic agent has been made to be loud acclaim and ardent advertising. So whatever discovery they have made of different therapeutic agents, it had been proclaimed loudly through advertisement. It, its use became widespread very shortly. So naturally, if you advertise any product, its use will also pick up and it would be widespread. Therefore, the use of such therapeutic agents, they became widespread in a short span of time. Soon the sincere students of science perceived through their lab research and from clinical observations that the seemingly curative action of the substance was dangerous to the patient. Now, as time went by and as science also advanced, the, the researchers working in the labs and also from clinical observations, they found out that these therapeutic agents, which they have discovered, they were, the action was dangerous to the patient. This, thus warnings were sent out that they should not be too free to use a substance except under the most careful observation. So they had a warning saying that whenever you want to use this substance, it has to be used only under careful medical observation or medical supervision. In the meantime, the fashion of use had spread, especially among those who always seek the easy road in therapeutics. But unfortunately, what happened? 
because of the advertisement campaign or because of this frequently uh, advertised uh, drugs, the use became widespread. And it was a fashion to use the drugs rather than give it on a true indication. The uninstructed and those who are addicted to self-dosing with a corresponding amount of further damage to health. So who used it? Those people who were who did not know exact indications of it or those people who like to self-medicate themselves, they were using them. And naturally, what, to, what was the outcome? Further damage to the health was there. So that's all for this part one. We will be taking up in the part two, the other more examples. I hope you like this chapter and I hope I made it easy for you to understand. Thank you very much.